myths, popular misconceptions, and random shenanigans wrapped around kilts. That's what we're talking about today. Everyday KD 380. All happened because somebody said that I can't wear the kilt, I can't wear my tartan. I, I can't. And I call BS across the board in its entirety. So, first and foremost, who can and can't wear the kilt? Um, everybody. Plain and simple. Anyone can wear a kilt. If you can't wear the kilt, it's either because, well, the only reason you couldn't wear a kilt is some kind of physical issue where you physically can't get a kilt on your body. Other than that, if you want to wear a kilt, you can wear a kilt. Another big popular misconception is that the kilt must be a specific length or it's not a real kilt. You know, you got the whole too long, you're lying, too short, you're not a man, a boy, whatever. It's all about preference. There are industry standards in kilt making right now because that's the easiest way to mass produce a garment. You say, well, about this long. Now, there are military regulations, or have been, and I'm sure they've changed over time, as to how long a military kilt is. That being said, I'm not wearing this kilt to war. Uh, if you want to have a kilt that goes halfway down your calves, fine. If you want a kilt that just barely covers what God gave you, fine. It's up to you. If you're comfortable wearing it, wear the kilt the way you want. Again, there are instances where a traditional style of a kilt is suggested formal events, military type things, you know, funerals, weddings, stuff like that, fine. But in general, if you're just wearing a kilt out, your body, your kilt, wear it the way you want. So another big misconception is that, well, you can't wear tartan if you're not Scottish. So what I do, I don't want to carry a dictionary, so I got my tablet and Wikipedia, tartan. So let's see what it says about where tartan came from. Origins, as of course, like I said, it says right here, and this is the Wikipedia page for tartan. Origins of tartan, mostly associated with Scotland and Scottish attire. Fine, but there have been pieces of tartan found in, let's see, near Salzburg, Austria, dating back around sixth, the 6th and 8th centuries B.C., Somebody in a Chinese province I can't pronounce, um, in around 3,000 BC, uh, 3,000 year old mummy in the Taklamakan Desert. I don't know where that, where that is. There are other finds in Europe, Europe and Scandinavia. Ervia, the earliest British tartan, 3rd century AD, found in, in Falkirk. Uh, so, no, tartan is not purely a Scottish thing. It's simply a pattern of cloth. Another big myth. You can only wear the tartan with your family. Again, complete hogwash. And here we go again. Let's see. And I've been saying this for years, but I'm going to say it again. Up until the middle of the 19th century clans did not have clan tartans. It is as quoted, as Wikipedia calls it, an invented tradition. The tartans associated with individual clans, according to this information, started on exactly April 15th, or April 8th, 1815, when the Highland Society of, of London resolved that all chiefs need to provide a piece of their tartan and their coat of arms to be registered and cataloged with them. So, before that, it says right here, clans wore tartan based on where they lived, not who, what clan they were a part of. If they lived in an area where had, which had lots of blues, greens, and reds, well, they well, might have a tartan like this one. If the area they had were in, you had nothing, so all you could do is black and white, ish, white-ish from the sheep, black from charcoal from fire, well, then you have a black and white tartan. 
So, and, and it says right here, talking about protected tartans, there are some tartans which are registered and trademarked, but that does not mean that you can't wear it. It says here, there is no, tart, under tartan etiquette, uh, blah, 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 blah. There are some tartans attributed to royalty and other organizations that are claimed to be off limits to people outside of the organization. But there are no actual rules on who can and can't wear whatever tartan. Now, you can prevent someone from selling it if you trademark your tartan, but wearing it? Now, there's a caveat to that. Some organizations are very strict about who can wear their tartan. And if you buy a tartan from this organization, first off, the person you bought it from obviously doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, my understanding is some of the organizations who have registered tartans, and they limit the wearing of that tartan to the members of the organization only, the people who sell that tartan know that they have to find, they have to be able to prove that the person buying it is a member. So, if you're going to buy a, cart, a kilt of a tartan that may be, fall into that restricted class, not officially, but where the organization who the tartan represents is really stringent about who can wear it, um, be sure you're ready to get your for what you're getting into. You I mean you'd be akin to wearing, you know, gang colors. Wrong gang. If you're wear and, and you're not a member of it, you, you could get yourself in trouble. Uh, I know there's a lot of motorcycles, motorcycle clubs up there where if you're not a part of their club and you get caught wearing their colors, you are in a whole hell of a lot of trouble. So there are some organizations who have kilts that are of their specific tartan that they have and they really don't want people outside of their organization wearing it so be careful when it comes to those now that being said that number of tartans is very very few very very few so if you don't think it's well it probably isn't protected whatever kilt you get just be careful with some of those uh, like I said there's only a handful of them that I'm aware of so just keep that under, uh, keep that in mind. Um, another big, big myth is that you can only wear a kilt a certain way. Again, complete and total BS. Kilt, belt, kilt pin, boots, warm jacket because I'm in my basement. It's cold and a Henley style shirt. Whoop! I, I didn't see that from where I am. That has a stain on it of some sort that shows up really well on the camera. I can barely see it. So, it's what I've been wearing all day. I feel like an ass now because I've had a big stain on my shirt. But anyway, how you wear your kilt is your decision, your choice. There are certain instances where a certain level of decorum may be suggested, but ultimately, it's your kilt. If you've got the confidence to wear your kilt wherever you want, well then wear it. Wear it the way you want to wear it. Just keep in mind that, you know, your decision means your consequences and your reactions. If you're wearing a kilt to something very formal, nobody else is wearing a kilt, you're going to get some attention. Uh, if it's a funeral and nobody there is a kilt in a kilt, that, that attention might not be welcome. Worse, if it's a wedding and the bride told you no kilts and you wear it anyway, well, the bride's mom's going to be pissed at you. So keep that in mind. That the, you know, certain occasions may dictate a little bit a little bit less freedom in, in how you put your kilt together simply to avoid awkward situations, but ultimately, again, your kilt you wear it the way you want to wear it. We are not living in an 18th century or 19th century reenactment. We are not all going to a military tattoo. We are not in, all in bagpipe bands. So, trying to spend all of that money to fit that very specific and narrow definition of kilted regalia, I think is silly. 
grab your kilt, wear it the way you want, as you want, so that you're comfortable and you can enjoy being who you are, when you are, and where you are. So, those are all the things I want to talk about today because, well, somebody decided to be an asshat to me. Anyway, give that a rest. Today I'll break out a Keltology. We are going to go with... Oh, yes, number 416, Kiltology, Volume 2. It's on Amazon. Go buy a copy. A Kilty's Daughter, number 416. If you find yourself or you fancy a Kilty's Daughter, know this. And I'm warning anybody out there who's about my daughter's age, this applies. You might as well wait until the Kilty is dead and gone before trying to court his daughter. The hell he will unleash upon you should you wrong his little princess is in every way far worse than anything in any holy book or horror movie out there. He will be your father-in-law and he can't and most definitely will go medieval on your ass. So, according to Kilty's daughter, that is the definition of treading lately and <laughs> be warned. So with that, tomorrow's Monday. Make sure you get the coffee on. And um, if anybody ever tells you otherwise about all of the things we've talked about today, ask them to prove it. Get some interesting discussion. Anyway, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You guys have a good night. Hope tomorrow's awesome. Actually, no. Don't hope. Make tomorrow awesome. You decide. Tomorrow will be awesome. See you tomorrow. Be strong.